Over the last 10 years, there has been a boom in whiskey. Distilleries that went defunct back in the 80s due to the popularity of vodka and cocaine, they're back. But this boom in whiskey is causing whiskey prices to soar and distribution to get more and more scarce. Distilleries are being put into a position where, in a lot of ways, they can do no wrong. The whiskey community is getting thirsty and distilleries are getting creative. So here are my top five weirdest whiskeys that I've had. For this first whiskey, this is one I've talked about before from a distillery that I have absolutely fallen in love with over the last six months. And thankfully, it's one right down the street from me. The distillery Adventurous Stills is a craft distillery that was opened in 2015 and their first tasting room was opened in Tempe, Arizona in 2017. Every spirit is handcrafted and done in-house, which essentially means they're not buying outside liquor to mix into their own batches. My current favorite from them is their Fossil Creek American Whiskey. And to be fair, this isn't for the faint of heart. It's a bit strong. It has quite a kick to it. It's not necessarily strong in alcohol or ABV, but it's strong in taste. The richness of this spirit comes from the chocolate and coffee notes that attack your palate. Even though the price of this bottle is well under $40, I wouldn't describe this as a daily drinker. And the reason for that is the taste of this spirit is so unique that a pour every once in a while might be enough for you. The next bottle is what I oddly refer to as a plum whiskey, and that's because the palate is primarily plum, and that's just something I've never had in a whiskey before. Now, while the bottle may fool you, this bottle is actually a single malt from California. This single malt is from St. George Spirits. It's called the Baller Whiskey. And there are hundreds of whiskeys out there made from 100% malted barley. And so it's good to recognize that what makes this spirit unique isn't the barley, but it's actually the aging process. The aging process with this spirit actually starts very simple. Once it's distilled, it's aged in bourbon casks and French oak wine casks. These two casks, they're really not unheard of, certainly not bourbon casks. And French oak wine, that's not a rarity either. But what makes this whiskey unique is the barrels that it's finished in. Another type of spirit that St. George creates is a Japanese plum liquor called Umeju. And just like every other type of spirit that we talk about in this channel, this spirit is aged in barrels and then bottled. So St. George reuses those barrels. For the baller whiskey, once it's done in the French oak wine casks, once it's done in the bourbon casks, they move it to these plum liquor casks. And this is what brings the uniqueness. I personally have never had a whiskey that has plum notes in it, but that final cask really brings those plum notes through. Distribution of this whiskey used to only be in California, but it has since moved across the country. So heading over to a big box store, you might be able to find it. Now, to be fair, I said these were my top five weird whiskeys. Not that they were all good. This next whiskey is made in the traditional spirit of the American South. It's moonshine. Yeah. This one is Clyde Mays Alabama Whiskey. This whiskey, in my opinion, is actually pretty gimmicky. They've really gone in on the moonshine kick. Essentially, it's, it's an attempt at high quality moonshine, even with that flavor note of apple hitting your tongue. So compared to moonshine, it's actually pretty high quality, but compared to whiskey, it certainly follows the spirit of moonshine it's pretty low quality. And even on their website, they say that it's best over ice or in a cocktail. And that may be true, I've only ever had it straight, but when you see that description from the distillery themselves, that should be a bit of a yellow flag. So with Clyde Mays being on the cheaper end of the spectrum, now we're gonna hop over to the expensive stuff. This one is Woodford Reserve's Chocolate Malted Rye. This high corn mash from Woodford Reserve is very similar to Adventurous Still's Fossil Creek, where it has that flavor punch of chocolate. When you smell this whiskey, the nose starts off with baking chocolate with light vanilla, and that continues with the taste, bringing out that dark chocolate, cocoa, and a hint of oak. 
This is one where if you like those chocolate notes in your whiskey, this is going to be one of the highest quality ones available. But unfortunately, when you're talking about the highest quality, you're talking about popularity, you're talking about being hard to find and certainly expensive. I've seen a pour of this whiskey at a bar for over $30, a bottle over $130. And even on top of that, if you're willing to spend that much, you have to fight to find a bottle. So unfortunately, one of the difficult things about liking chocolate in your whiskey is a lot of these bottles are either hard to find or pricey. And last, but certainly not least, this bottle is my favorite on the list. Not necessarily for the flavor profile because it's absolutely an acquired taste, but more so for the story behind it. This is Mesquite Smoked Whiskey from Del Bach Distillery. Now for the story. So when you take a look at Scotch whiskey, a lot of it is peated. Essentially, they're throwing peat bogs on the fire when they dry the grains in order to get that smoky flavor into it. Why do they use peat? Well, peat is very prevalent in Scotland. It's easy to find, it's everywhere. So while American single malts have been known to use peat, the same peat that's used in Scotland, it's harder to ship over, it's harder to find. So Del Bac Distillery took a different route. Del Bac Distillery is located in Tucson, Arizona, in the American Southwest. And instead of peat, what's common and easy to find in the American Southwest? It's mesquite. Del Bac, Instead of peat bogs, they just burn mesquite and they pump that mesquite smoke into the oven that's drying the grains. And this taste of barbecue, this taste of mesquite absolutely comes through in the whiskey. Now, if you wanna try this variety of whiskey, I would absolutely suggest their Dorado. This is their standard bottle that has the mesquite smoke process in it, and it's pretty common to be found in big box stores. But what I would recommend is to wait around for their yearly release of the distiller's cut. This yearly release is cast strength, and there hasn't been a bad year yet. And there are your top five weird whiskeys. Now, weird might not always be a good thing, but weird is definitely something that I'm always willing to try. My advice is to go out and support your local craft distilleries. Distilleries like Del Bac, distilleries like Adventurous Stills, they're the ones doing some of the coolest things in the industry right now. And with that, thanks for stopping by. If you have any weird whiskey stories yourself, drop them in the comments. And if you ever find yourself not wanting to drink alone, come have a drink with me on Twitch. I stream every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night. I'll see y'all.